Okay, so next up, what we need to do is we need to analyze the data that we have. Now, I just want to point something out to you. It says very clearly in the pad that you will not earn any marks for functions that do not produce meaningful or relevant information. So, to give you an example of irrelevant information, the sum total of the different birth years, the sum of the importance of pets, is completely irrelevant. There is nothing you can prove with that. Even, I want to go as far as saying, is the number of males versus females that filled in your report is not relevant. What are you proving with that? So the point of the functions is to actually get to some meaningful insights and conclusions that you can draw from your data. I just want to point something out to you that can cost you marks. Some functions will result in an error like this one. You, do you see the little green um, triangle at the top? That means there's an error that Excel picked up. So please go click on that cell, see what the error says. This one says the formula emits adjacent cells. And if you look at the actual formula, oops, I actually missed this cell and then fix it because otherwise you will lose marks. The other thing, so there's a mark for relevant functions that you actually did processing that's useful. So like I've said a million times, a sum on the birth year is not useful. And then you actually lose that mark if you do things like that. But then there's also a mark just to say that you've done the functions correctly. So please consult your textbook while you do these functions so that you're 100% sure that you're using the functions correctly and that the syntax of the function is correct. And if I say syntax, if I look at VLOOKUP, this is the syntax. What order each argument in the function needs to come in. And if you're unsure at any point, just go to the fx function builder and you'll see it actually gives you some hints and tells you at the bottom here what to do. The table array is the table where this and this and this. That is the number what what what. Just have a read through here and make sure that you do your functions correctly. So let's have a look at what you need to do to earn your marks. A level one function, you get one mark per level. So even if you do 20 count ifs, you're only going to earn one mark because it counts as one level. So you earn a mark for level one, and that is some kind of simple function that is that has a single cell range, such as sum, max, min, count, average, mode, median, len, value, or a formula that uses a plus, minus, divide, or, or multiply. So you need to go have a look at your data and decide on what column, on what field, if one can call it that, as we talk in Access about it, on what field can I do one of those simple functions? Just remember, it has to be relevant. Next up, we need to do for a level two, we need to have functions that include a cell range plus a parameter. So um, if you're working out the age, you can maybe do a round, um, large, small, left, right, concatenate. Those are all nice ones to use, but personally, I think everyone just has to use a count if. That's the most basic ones that one that we're going to use anyway to analyze our data. I don't think a sum if is very relevant, and I'm going to tell you why now. And um, let's look at a count if. So um, count if you'll use on almost any of your text fields to be able to make a summary of how many ch people chose this or that. Now, I just want to point something out to you because I don't know if everyone knows this yet. But if you had a field where people were allowed to choose more than one option, a count if works a bit differently. So if I have a count if and I want to count how many dogs there are in this range, you'll see what happens is I just get the answer to because there are only two cells that contain the actual word dog and only the actual word dog. So if I want my function to look inside the cell for the value over there as well, I need to use what is called wildcards. Wildcards enable a function to look for 
something inside a field. The star represents any other characters. So that means there can be any other characters after dogs. There can be any characters before dog. Dog just needs to be somewhere in that cell for it to be counted. And there we have the actual answer, 9. So that's the kind of count if that you will use for fields where people were allowed to choose more than one answer. So I prefer putting a label and um, working out how many people have each type of pet, for example, and a heading. Then I'll take this whole lot, cut it, not copy, cut it, and go paste it on my analysis page. I did my VLOOKUP there earlier, so don't worry about that, but we need to format that anyway. And then you'll have to go format that the same as the table that you did over here. Remember, if you don't repeat the formatting on your analysis page, then you actually lose all the marks for the hard work that you did for the formatting over there. All right, so something like that as an example. Okay, so that was the second mark. Um, I just want to say the reason I don't think sum if is very suitable is um, let's say, for example, we do a sum if of uh, what the importance is of pets for all the males. Then your answer will be completely skewed based on how many males answered the questionnaire. So if I had 10 males who answered the questionnaire and just one female, then obviously it will look as if males find pets more important than females, but that's not true. That's just the way that's skewed because of the number of males and females I have. So I'm not fond of some if for this, but if you're up for it, it's really worth it to have a look at average if. Average if has exactly the same syntax as some if, and then you can get really good answers where you can really see for example, where the pets are more important to females than males. Right, third mark. Now, if you've already done what I recommended with the date, then you've actually already got the fourth mark because you used a date and time function, namely date. Otherwise, the other kind of functions you can use, um, mid, find, power, count, ifs, uh, round up, ran between, or a simple if function. Just remember, it has to be relevant. So the only one I think that is really easy to make very relevant is a count ifs, and that is where you count something based on two criteria. So you'll, for example, say how many people say they currently own pets and, um, and they knew the term of a fur baby beforehand or whatever. Then you'll count only people who have a double yes, for example. Okay, and then the last one you've also already got, if you did what I recommended, if you have a VLOOKUP or a nested IF function, you get the fourth mark. If you did not do the VLOOKUP um, on the uh, birth for the birthday column to, to get the birth month into a number, then you can maybe also do a VLOOKUP column for something like a scale question where you assign a value to each number. So you'll then say... Um, 1 to 2 is not very important, 3 to 4 is very important, 5 to 6 is extremely important, or whatever, something like that. And then um, you can do a VLOOKUP and, and count how many each have. But if you did my recommendation, you already have it. Now, the last thing I want to recommend with these functions is to actually point out to your teacher where you did what. So... Um, at any of these functions, I'm going to use one where I actually did not do a function so that you don't see the function I did. Well, I mean, you saw this one I did anyway. So um, here I'll actually put in a comment and say level 2 count if. And um, the VLOOKUP, you'll then say that's a level 4. So for this one, I actually did the level 2, level 3 and 4 together. So put a comment. Um, this is obviously a function that you did on your data that you will not be moving to the analysis page because it actually has to stay per person in the same table. But anything else where you make a little summary or you work out a sum or an average or a, 
or a, a node or a median or whatever on, on anything. Um, move all of those analysis here. Just remember, as I said, cut, not copy. And then just put in a comment everywhere to point out to the teacher what you did for each level. Now you'll find that you've actually done very little functions and then you already have the marks that you need. But you need to create at least two graphs. And before you are able to do a graph, you actually need to do a summary table similar to this before you can actually do a graph. So personally, I'd recommend doing three graphs. Uh, but if you if you don't want to just do two, that's fine. But then you have to summarize, in other words, at least two questions. Even though you only earn the mark for the first count if, that what's the point of just counting the number of dogs? You have to count the other values in the column as well. So I'd say do at least a thorough analysis of two to three questions, preferably more, but at least two to three so that you can then produce good quality graphs of it. The last thing we need to do in terms of processing is this tab for other. So there's one mark for doing a calculation that is not part of your questionnaire data. So that's actually quite easy. Just go to your phase one research and find anywhere where you have some statistics. So this is, for example, an article about overpopulation. And here it says the population growth is an average of 1.6%. And there's another place in the article where it actually says, let's see if I can find it now. Yes, Africa has a population of 1.2 billion. Okay, I suppose that this was only for South Africa, uh, the population growth rate. Okay, but you get the point. If I get the population of South Africa, and I get the population growth, then I can do a small calculation myself and actually predict what the population numbers will be in 10 years time, for example. So to do that, I'll then just put the name of this article that is saved in my sources. It has to be one of the, so I'll say from, and I'll put the name of the source, and then I'll do a small calculation here with clear labels and some or other formula to show how the population growth will increase. That's just an example. I think almost all these topics lends itself towards a quite an easy calculation that you can do from data that you get from your sources.